Hi everybody, today I'm going to be building a mid-price gaming PC. By mid-price I mean the components cost about a thousand UK pounds, which I guess is about the same in US dollars, taking into account the price differences. And it's just the box, not the screen and other stuff. Let's have a look at the components. It'll be a Windows 10 PC um, capable of playing games at reasonable FPS. Processor is a Core i5-6600, no overclocking for me, and it'll be the 1151 um, chipset socket. Got the memory here, which is uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4. I've decided to go for the kind of latest um, motherboard and RAM configuration with the Skylake processor. This is a gigabyte motherboard. I, I basically choose motherboards on the basis of reputation and experience. I always in the past have used Asus, but I'm trying Gigabyte this time because people are telling me that they're good uh, designs. Here's uh, SSDs. I've actually got two SSDs. Only one of them will be for the operating system. Though. This is the graphics card. Obviously an important choice. It's an 8 gigabyte MSI R9 390 graphics card. Uh, probably the most expensive component in the build. Power supply is very important. I never skimp on the power supply. I've heard good things about EVGA. I've always used Corsair and Seasonic in the past. We'll see how that works out. This is the cooler that I'm going to put on the CPU. It's a kind of uh, fairly budget orientated but reasonable performing cooler. Obviously, I'm not overclocking, so I don't need to go crazy. Screwdriver, tweaky thing, Twe tweezers for when I drop stuff, torch when it's dark inside the case. Cup of coffee, off we go. And the time is quarter past 12 today. Let's see how we get on time-wise. Little ducky as well to keep stuff in just in case I, well, obviously lose stuff, which I almost certainly will at some point. We're going to install all the basic components, CPU, memory, graphics card, put some power on outside the case, and just see something on the screen and make sure we've got a live system before we install it all in the case. Um, I'm checking the manual here to make sure that I get the DDR in the right slots. because It's not always quite as obvious as it seems. But here it does seem obvious. As you can see, it's a bit of a red theme going on. I'm not a very blingy PC builder. But uh, it does make sense when you're buying components to buy them all the same colour. So I went for red. Okay, just two RAM sticks in the slots, and they seem to have been seated fairly well. Okay, I'm going to use the stock CPU cooler that came with the CPU um, for the test, but obviously not in the main build. Installing the CPU. I like to keep the little plastic cover on. It pops off of its own accord when you put the CPU in the slot and apply pressure using securing lever orientation right lever down and yeah off it pops fantastic okay ram and cpu installed as i mentioned we're using the stock cpu cooler for this test actually perfectly fine for probably a lot of purposes i like to put something a little bit more meaty and capable on, even though I don't overclock these days. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it would probably do the job. Um, at idle, it's fairly quiet, as you'll see when we get this thing spinning. But uh, under load, can get a little bit noisy, in my opinion. Okay, let's mount the graphics card. I'm using the motherboard box and the static proof bag just as a base while I just get the test on. Need to be a little bit careful with this because this is a really heavy graphics card and I don't want to damage the slots or the motherboard because it's unsupported. Um, just hooking it up to a monitor and now we just need to connect up all the power stuff um, so that we can actually get things spinning and moving. The objective here is really just to test the main components of the system and make sure that everything is functioning. It's a lot easier to test and check things outside the case than it is once you've gone to all the trouble of installing the motherboard and everything else. If you've ever installed a motherboard motherboard in a case, 
and then found it to be faulty and had to take it back out again, you'll know and understand why I'm doing this. It doesn't take very long at all. So you can see me connecting up all the power connectors here to the motherboard, the main power connector, the CPU connector, and the extra power connectors required for the graphics card. Incidentally, whilst on the subject of the power supply, I'm not particularly impressed with the quality of the cables and the fit of the sockets and cable terminations on this EVGA power, power supply. I don't think I'll be buying another EVGA power supply. I'm going to use my little metal tweezers and I'm just going to short the two pins quickly to get the power on. There we go. Right, now what we're looking for, or hoping for I should say, is something that looks like life. There you go. Now I have speeded that little bit up actually. But um, what we're seeing there is a BIOS screen that indicates to me that everything is working fine. Okay, good news. And timing wise, we're just about, just over an hour in, which is not bad going. And I think well worth the time spent. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this all to pieces, clean up the CPU after removing the stock cooler, and we're going to start installing stuff into the case, and in general, I start with the PSU. I guess there's lots of different ways of doing it. Here's me putting the PSU in. It comes with some rather nasty, cheap quality metal screws which rounded off when I tried to put them in. So again, not a very big tick in the box for EVGA. Not impressed. Okay. But uh, we get it installed eventually. Okay, and obviously following on from that, we then need to start thinking about our other components The case is a Fractal Define R4 mid-sized tower. And I forgot to mention, I removed this uh, drive bay, because it was unnecessary for me, uh, create a bit more airflow inside the case, a bit more space, just take that screw out and removed it. It's a very substantial and meaty case. Um, quite, well, I would say quite good value for the cost, which was relatively low budget. It cost, uh, I think, £69 here in the UK. Here's me fitting the motherboard template to the aperture on the back of the case. Okay, here I'm installing the upstanders for the motherboard in the bottom of the case. Okay, at this stage I've now installed the motherboard in the bottom of the case and now I'm putting the graphics card in. This proved to be quite tricky. It wasn't a great fit. Uh, the bracket didn't meet with the securing nut positions on the case particularly well. I don't know whether it was the graphics card or the case. That's the old stock cooler. Here's the uh, aftermarket, slightly more meaty cooler, uh, which we're going to install, the Evo 212. It comes with all this complicated bracketry and screws and everything else, which is a bit of a pain to install. I wonder if they'll ever make a cooler that isn't a pain to install. Apart from the stock one, that is. That's it installed in its final position. Okay, here's a couple of the brackets I can install these SSDs into and fit into the remaining module. Um, interestingly, the Gigabyte motherboard comes with this nice little organizer that you fit all the motherboard connectors into. Obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff to connect up as well. And that's uh, a view of the bracket on the back of the CPU cooler. Okay, first power on test, and you get to see me really get it wrong. This will be funny. Okay, so this is me wondering, why? what's happening? Why is it not starting? Oh, wait a minute. I haven't plugged it in. <laughs> and actually, on second attempt, uh, here's the power on. You can see the fan spinning, but there's no boot screen. And what I found subsequently, and as you'll see in the next shot, is that I'd actually forgotten to plug in the additional CPU power connector to the PSU. Obviously, by process of elimination, when things like that happen, you just don't panic. You just check everything and double check, and you can usually find the problem. Okay, looking for signs of life, and there it is. So that's a success. Timing-wise, we've been about three and a half hours at it. That includes making some food, lots of coffee, and taking Amazon deliveries, so it's not too bad. Um, basically, we've got a completed computer now, so I'm going to install Windows 10 which I'm not going to take you through. It's not really a very scintillating watch. In some ways, this is the uh, 
most long-winded and annoying part, which is installing all the drivers and everything else. I tend to download the latest ones from the websites rather than use the ones on the disk that come to the components. Um, but uh, as you can see, this unit is running fairly stably. I'm not a purist. You could probably pick me up on my cable management or some of the aspects of my build, which is fine. Um, I'm just an amateur like everyone else, combining my hobbies of making videos and building PCs. But overall, I think we'll call this one a success. I'll link all the components, um, what I use to make this PC, um, and any kind of lessons learned for you guys to look at in the show notes. And thanks very much for watching. See you next time.